Hi, this is Jed Norman, TTA with LG Seeds up here in North Central Iowa, and this is your Agronomy Tip of the Week. Today I wanted to talk to you about frost injury on soybeans. About four days ago, we experienced some cooler temps in that 28 to 30 degree Fahrenheit range. Anytime you're dealing with those type of temperatures for an extended period of time, it can result into some type of frost injury for any crop. Now we experienced about two and a half hours, two and a half to three hours. And for a soybean, in those temps for that long of time can start causing a little bit of frost injury. Going into it, I had some guys asking me, will we be okay? And it's gonna be different. There's a lot of different scenarios when it came down to it. For the most part, I felt like well, going into it, we really didn't have soybeans uh, far enough along that was going to be resulting in any type of injury. Another factor we had going for us was our soil temps really uh, were in kind of that 50 degree uh, range, which at night it gets a little bit cooler, but it is still warmer than that, the outside temperature. And it really kind of acted as a buffer zone for that seedling or for that plant as it was just emerging right there above ground level. So it, it's not a fail safe, but it really did help. Uh, really did help us. Another factor we had going for us that evening was we had a little bit of wind, which the wind really kind of helped not keeping anything still and cold for too long. It really kind of had nice circulation to it. It may not always be the case where it helped, but in this case, some, most cases it did. But with guys calling and asking, hey, you know, did this, did this hurt us? You know, are we going to need to replant? Well, the best, the best thing we can do is go out to a field and take a look. So this is what I'm finding. In this particular field, this is a, uh, a no-till situation in 15 inch rows. Now, the spot that I'm in is a tilled up area and a low spot. I really was having a hard time finding, uh, finding some soybean injury up on the hills where there was a lot of cover, which case in point, having some type of cover did kind of help us. But for instance, in this case, we're in this low area and uh, the soil temperatures were able to warm up relatively quick and the beans popped out a little bit quicker, which time frame wise paired up real nicely with the frost injury. What we're seeing here is a few things, some in which are due to uh, some frost injury and some others could be misleading and uh, look like some type of frost injury, which in fact, it could be something else. On my left here, right here, is a soybean that would have been affected by the frost injury. You can kind of tell right here below the cotyledons where your two growth points are, and the cotyledons themselves and the hippocotyl are all necrotic. They've all lost their pigmentation, they're all colored. If I were to dig this one up, I bet you the hippocotyl has been enlarged and uh, is, is going to be a dead carcass relatively soon. So this one's dead. This particular one, our cotyledons are green. And we look looks like we've got a unifoliate try, trying to unfold. We've got good color. And we what looks like this is a living plant, will be just fine. This particular one, this particular one looks like it just popped maybe a few days ago. You can kind of see where we had some yellowing of the cotyledon, and that tends to happen when we're sticking into the ground and we're not collecting any sun and everything else was. But for the most part, this plant is living. This one will make it. You will also see sometimes, I believe it's called like a, a levo halo that uh, will tend to do this. I'm not too sure that this was planted with levo, but just make sure that this could be another, uh, this could be something else going on here. And another thing here I want to point out is this, uh, this hippocotyl right here. I've had some calls with guys saying, I've got all my stems that are bruised. For this, in this case, this particular hippocotyl is not bruised. It's been exposed to sunlight and has not popped out, uh, popped the cotyledons out for a while. Anytime the hippocotyl is exposed like this to the sun sh sunlight, it is collecting sugars in that hippocotyl and just waiting for the, those cotyledons to pop. So 
once that once those cotyledons pop that will become normal and that is not frost injury so as you can see we did get a little bit of frost injury but in my mind for this particular situation this particular field it's still a little bit too early to justify if we need to do anything about it i've told guys waiting three to five days is relatively a good thing just so we can see what's happening in this case it might take more since it got it got cold it's turned off cold and dry which really doesn't promote growth for about anything so I'll come back here in a few days. Looks like we've got a little bit of heat and some moisture uh, here in the next day or two. That'll really help me determine whether or not we need to do anything with this stand. Well, I hope you learned something today. I appreciate you joining me. Please stay tuned for uh, next week's tip of the week and go LG.